something special brewed up for you today. I got some delicious coffee ready to go. I hope you do too, because this is going to be a good one. Today we are going to go over the famous line, well, famous in the quantum grammar community line, no law or fact shall be tried in court. And we're going to start off at the beginning from an early seminar from the late Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller. Of course, folks, this presupposes that you're familiar with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. The grammar technology that the man you see on your screen brought to the public in 1988. All right. He's the guy that brought it to us. Anybody that came after him, myself included, can't hold a candle to the guy. All right. At least that's my humble perception of that. It doesn't matter what your name is, how many colons or hyphens you have in your name. This is the guy that started it all. All right. Anybody out there who's claiming otherwise is either a charlatan, a liar, or they may indeed be what they say they are, but they have not proven it. So let's leave that there. And let's hear Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller's uh, explication of this particular scenario. If you commit a fraud on day number one, the other 199 hearings are also fraud because they were predicated on day number one. And the judge stands up and says, I don't have a pay scale high enough to deal with this. He says, you're not a barrister. You can't represent him. I says, yes, I am. You don't have a six year college degree to know what a barrister knows, but a barrister only knows how to read and write an adverb verb. And he's restricted to do that because they have a code. No law or fact shall be tried in court. That is their law. That is their oath. Every judge, barrister, lawyer, attorney, worldwide, all countries, all languages square to this. I got to point out, folks, this man claimed to be a 92nd degree Freemason, Master Mason. And he is using that language when he said, blah, 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 all square to this. I just wanted to point that out. Adverb, that's a negative adverb, modifies the verb or is a conjunction. Fact becomes a verb. Shall is a pronoun. Be is an adverb, making try to be a past time verb. In is an adverb, modifies the verb core. It's a dang. This is where folks are perhaps going to find difficulty in accepting what I'm about to say. Okay? Because if you look at what he's put there on the board, it is not correct. By his own teaching. David Wim Miller taught five syntax patterns, okay? The basis of, you know, when you're syntaxing adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Five syntax scenarios. You have the adverb, verb, the one, two. You have the pronoun adverb, verb, four, one, two. You have the adjective pronoun, three, four. You have the adverb adjective pronoun, one, three, four. And finally, you have the pronoun adverb adjective pronoun, the four, one, three. Nowhere in what I just said do you see a two, four. And quite plainly, you see on this board here, no law or fact shall be. You have a one, two, zero, two, four. You have a two and a four. Not correct, folks. Now, I feel like, from my position, I know better than anybody. When you're in the heat of the moment, when you're doing a presentation like he's doing, when you're doing a video, you're doing a public seminar, whatever, you make mistakes, bro. You just do. It's to err is human. This is a mistake. All right? 2-4 is definitely 
a mistake. That is not how that would be syntax. So, with the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, and the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, I am going to gift to you the correct syntaxing of that sentence, and I'm going to give you closure on why it is I'm banking the values that I'm banking. Before I do that, we're going to listen to this a little bit more to see if he actually gives closure on the values that he has banked. Angling participle. You've got a verb law, a verb fact, and a verb court. You can only have one jurisdiction in court. It's called the least common denominator. In a math problem, you must always acquire the least common denominator in order to solve the problem. Your least common denominator is one. You got one jurisdiction under maritime law, one jurisdiction under maritime facts, and one jurisdiction under maritime court called verb, which is an illusion. In an illusion, three plus three equals all numbers in the universe except six. You can't try three plus three equals six. And act. A-C-T. All words that start with a vowel, A, E, I, O, and U are followed by two consonants means no contract. You're going to say, where do I find that rule? Look up every word in the dictionary. Get yourself a nice eight inch thick Webster's Unabridged Dictionary and look up every word okay. that starts with a vowel and two consonants. And the, all the synonyms that reflect that word and you will find a no contract, a negative condition of state for every single word. ACT means no contract. This is a room. This room has four corners. Okay, he's going to go into the mechanics of, of what a court is. But he's not going to go into any more closure on the syntax values that he banked. Now, what he said there about a vowel in front of two consonants, 100% correct. I agree with, based upon my own research, my own going out and finding out and trying to certify the, the teachings that he promulgated. But I'll go even further and say that any word that starts with a vowel followed by a consonant, doesn't matter if it's one consonant, two consonants, three consonants, four, whatever. If the word starts with a vowel and is followed by a consonant, it is no contract. And I definitely go into in-depth closure on that in two specific videos for the closure and clarity of the two specific syntax scenarios, parts one and two. Uh, those two videos for sure. And also a plethora of other videos in my syntax playlist. You're more than welcome to check those out. There's about 900-ish videos you can check out uh, having to do with this grammar technology. But I digress. Let's bring it back to the sentence that he just syntaxed on the board there. No law or fact shall be tried in court. Now, I know there's other things he was talking about, maritime and, and one and blah, 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 blah. Verb is illusion. I think what he meant by that, I mean, not, not, I'm not going to make a claim for David my perception of what he meant by that is that verb, it's, it's, in a way, it possesses both intangible and tangible qualities because it's movement. It's not a, a solid state. However, there's no way anyone can function in this continuum domain, in this now space domain, without thinking. You have to think. Although you have to have something to think about first, before you think, the thinking happens as a result of a constant. So therefore, the verb of correct sentence structure is, and the plural form of that are, is tangible. Meaning tangible contract. Try navigating anywhere without thinking. There is no way to do it. There is no possible, probable, nor plausible way to do that. That's why the verb of the thinking is tangible, all right? But it has a, a perceivable, non-tangible quality to it because it's moving. It's movement, all right? It's not constant. It is constant, and that's the dichotomy of the verb. So the way I explain it is when you're syntaxing in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, just like you see on the screen here, no law or fact shall be tried in court. 
the basis of your syntax comes from whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And the way you credential that is to go into an etymology dictionary. It doesn't matter which dictionary it is. I use etymologyonline.com. And you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word. If that earliest nativity root meaning is tangible, then you syntax the word as tangible, meaning it will be either a verb, adjective, or a pronoun. It will not be an adverb. Or the earliest nativity root meaning of the word will be non-tangible, which means it will either be an adverb, verb, or a pronoun. It will not be an adjective. So through process of elimination, you can very easily syntax a sentence. Once you get those principles uh, imprinted, on your formatory apparatus. So let's write down the syntax values that David gave in that video. Negative one, two, zero, two, four, one, two, one, two. I've gone into the negative things and, and why those would be credentialed as such in uh, earlier videos. I personally don't do that anymore. I find it's not necessary. I understand he's using it as a teaching tool, but let's stick to the basics. So we have, and remember the syntax scenarios I gave you, right? Remember those things. Adverb, verb, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. So we have adverb, verb, one, two, and then we have the neutral condition of state conjunction, which is a zero, and then a two. So in essence, this adverb is modifying law and fact because or is a neutral condition of the state conjunction. That's why it's given a zero as a numerical value because it's neutral. It is not a modifier, nor does it modify anything. So this adverb is modifying both law and fact. Then we have a four. So we have a two, four scenario. Do you see anywhere in these syntax scenarios, a two, four scenario? No, you do not. You see a one, two, a four, one, two, a three, four, a one, three, four, and a four, one, three, four. So shall cannot be a four in this scenario. And then he follows shall with an adverb be. If you're going to give be the syntax value of adverb, then that means it is non-tangible contract, as I told you a few minutes ago. That is not the case with the word be. The word be is actually tangible contract, and it actually is connected to the root of the verb of the thinking is. And I will show you a continuance of the evidence as to why that is so. So B, from Proto-Indo-European root, B-H-E-U-E, -E, which means exist, grow. I personally have an extremely tangible contract with what it means to exist and to grow. Therefore, B would be syntax as tangible contract. Therefore, it would not and could not be an adverb. Tried, David has syntax as a verb in the past tense, which is 100% correct as far as the past tense goes. But because there are mistakes in here, we are going to have to redo this and correct it. The word no, and I will be doing a video on this in the future. I'm with the vision of doing a video on this. No is very strange. If you look it up in an etymology dictionary, you will find both non-tangible contract elements and tangible contract elements. However, based upon my perception of what is being construed 
in those meetings, those earliest nativity root meetings, I will say that no is non-tangible contract. And so I agree with David's value of adverb as far as that goes. Now, law is not going to be a verb simply because fact, shall, be, and tried are all tangible contract. So law is going to be a tangible contract adjective. Fact is going to be a tangible contract adjective. Shall is going to be a tangible contract adjective in the future tense. B, as I just showed you, is tangible contract and it's going to be an adjective. And then we have tried, which is a tangible contract pronoun in the past tense because B is coloring it into a pronoun. Now, in the rules of syntax, in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or, let's say it all together, folks, an adverb. And then court is a tangible contract dangling participle verb. So that is the correct syntax of that sentence. It's adverb, adjective, conjunction, adjective, adjective future tense, adjective, pronoun past tense, adverb verb. And I've just given you closure as to why that is so. Here is your syntax key. Let's cross all our I's and dot all our T's and point out the particles of negation in the sentence. So, of course, no is a particle of negation. Any vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is a particle of negation. Shall is a particle of negation because it negates the now time. ED is a particle of negation. The I and N is a particle of negation. And there you go. There's your forensics. And your syntax scenarios. You have a 1, 3, 4 and a 1, 2. Those are your two plainly visible syntax scenarios. And if you want to check it even further, you can see a 4, 1, 2 if you so choose. So now you may ask, well, how do you correct that? How do you say that or articulate that convey that using correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. Well, I'm glad you asked, folks. I'm glad you asked. Because rather than conveying a negative condition of state, I'm going to offer you a positive performance sentence and give you my closure on what rule one, rule equal means. And though that is the basis of judge mechanics, all judge mechanics, rule one, rule equal, what I'm about to show you. For the rule one, rule equal of this finite mean is with the consideration of the wholeness, singularity, with the contract parties, of the location, with the geometric plane and level field, of the contract, with the vital force dynamic of the lens with the performance by this claim. Backwards to mathematically certify this sentence and this closure and this meaning, it would read, for this claim of the performance is with the lens of the vital force dynamic with the contract of the geometric plane level field with the location of the contract parties with the wholeness and singularity of the consideration 
with this finite mean by the rule one, rule equal, full stop. And there you have it, folks. No law or fact shall be tried in court. Adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, BS. Much gratitude, much thankfulness to the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller for the gifts he has given us because without him, I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. And certainly no one else out there would be doing what they're doing either in this domain of the quantum grammar community. I hope you found this helpful. And stay tuned for information on how you can learn this grammar, too. Thanks.